Say kids, what time is it? PDR Tool 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 Time. Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Mike Toledo. We just had, you just heard a guest talk, my little daughter, Gabby. She's four years old today, and uh, we put her inside. So I'm with uh, Daniel Grom, Vince D'Alessandro, and John Hiley couldn't make it. He's got another Saturday night hot date with his wifey. So let's get this party going. How you doing, guys? Hi. How's yeah. it going, Daniel? What's crack a lacking, guys? Doing awesome. Doing awesome. Another Excited. beautiful, beautiful Saturday here in Southern California. Beautiful, Very cloudy, nice. overcast. <laughs> yeah. How was your like, week? <laughs> Did you make lots of money? Yes, lots of money this week. Nice. Back into the regular routine of things. Mo money. How was your, money. How was your month last month? April. Yeah. April. Uh, it was probably one of the worst on record. Really. Really. Yeah. Taxes. Why? I don't. I. You know. We'll uh, blame it on that. We'll blame it on that. Yeah. We blame it on taxes. We blame it on an election year. We blame it on Easter. They all kind of culminated in April. See that? That's usually my story. But this year, I uh, I broke a record last month. So. Because you raise your prices. That. And honestly, I, I really believe it's all the the new tools for doing big dents, man. I'm whipping through some of these big dents. Um, you know, I usually tell people, I'll give them, a, okay, it's going to be about three or four hours, and I'm done in an hour. And uh, it's amazing. That's, so, I agree. I agree. It's, it's, I hate to say it when we're all on dorting.com, well, me and, me and Vince been on Dorting.com since back in the day, day. But you remember when I used to post big dents, and people were like, "Oh, you, why would you do that?" You know, everyone thinks you're gonna, you. That's what you can do. That's all you do. I mean, you. you that's what right. you're gonna get is just big dents, you know. And I always knew that was gonna be the future. And look at it now. It's because we do big dents now. It's becoming easier, along with obviously the tools that are making it easier. So, absolutely, I, I think we find ways to make things easier. Um, the yeah. dents are lighter. I mean, the metal's lighter, but that doesn't mean it's easier because it's more crunched. But the tools we have, and we're going back to Cola Fria too, because that's freaking that's oh, a yeah. lifesaver right there, dude. Check this out. I had a uh, an older Saab, um, but the guy it, it was in really nice shape, and it had a, a huge dent in the back quarter panel. And I put Cola Fria on it. I I took it out one one hit. And honestly, I could have probably charged them just for that. Um, it was good enough, almost. There was a little bit left in the corner by the tail light, so I ended up glue pulling that, blending it, um, and that was pretty much it. I mean, I was done in a half an hour on that dent, and it was uh, five hundred and fifty dollars. So, that's yep. That's what I'm saying. It's it, it's making life a that lot paid easier. Paid for the Cola Fria right there. Well, not to mention the tabs. I, I actually had a guy from Australia. I have one currently as a student, but I had some a couple come that they're doing some gig in Australia, but they wanted to consult with me for a little bit. And and I gave them a shot at, uh, I said, here's a dent and aluminum panel. You know, we put a hail dent in it. Now, most people back in the day, let's, let's say maybe six months ago, would say you can't glue pole a ding like that in a, an aluminum panel. So we took, um, the black plague and the, and the root beer tab. Mm -hmm. And we got that center out in one pole with the mini lifter. And he was blown away because he doesn't, he didn't think that you could actually do that. You know, we yeah. knew we could pull it, but how many poles would it take you to get that center out? It's like a lollipop now. <laughs> you know what I mean? How yeah. Many, how many poles are going to take you to get to that center? Uh, yeah. one so uh, three yeah that yeah, was back a in one, the day a two a three <laughs> yeah dude you three. got yeah you remember those old school yeah. old school commercial man um but that's just going to show you how how advanced these tools and glue pulling and, and you know whatever it is it's that's becoming making your job so much easier and light and quicker 
And that's why we have PDR tool time. <laughs> that's right. Uh, help help yeah. share the share the share the wealth. We don't want anybody being hacks out there. Come on, do it, do it, do it easier. It works smarter, not harder. That's the whole point of this game. So yeah, I agree. So what's our show about, guys? So this week we're going to talk. We're going to have personal tool reviews. So uh, some companies have been sending us tools to check out, and I like to give a tool a a thorough test. Um, I like, I don't like to review it right away. So I, I want to be able to use it, make sure um, I've really evaluated it carefully. And um, so that's what our show is about. So um, I'm going to be talking about a hammer that Jonathan, I'm going to butcher his last name. I don't even know. Jonathan's from, uh, you from England? Is that right? Uh, I don't think he's from England. I think he's from uh, the uh, UK somewhere. Uh, well, he's okay. he's uh, the Netherlands or something like that. I've, I've, I I I apologize. I don't even want it. He's not from the UK though. I mean, not from uh, England. Not from England. Okay. He might live there, but he's not really not from there. So, um, great guy. We we partied with him uh, many times over at MTE. Mm -hmm. Really good guy. Mm -hmm. And he sent me his blending hammer. Um, and if you guys haven't seen this, it's uh, cpt.be is his website. And it's a wooden handle. And then he's got a bunch of different accessories on it. And honestly, the, the accessories are worth buying the hammer for. Um, you know, some may not like his wooden handle, um, but you can put those accessories on any hammer. So um, whatever you're used to, buy it for his accessories. And he has a mini uh, slapper, I guess you would call it. I know, I, do we have a name for that, for doing crowns? That's like a rectangle, uh, polished, beveled, polished. Tip, yeah, right? it's about a three-inch long rectangle by inch and a half, I think. And polished, it's got a nice curve on it, um, and the hammer is actually really nice. It feels good in wood, and um, and then he's got it. He's got the handle drilled with uh, and threaded, so you can put all your tips on the t on the end of it. But what I found is I put one of the tips on, and I laid the hammer down with the the tip holding the 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 end up. And it perfectly balanced it right, right where you want it on a dent. And then you can strike it from uh, the top side. And, and he has the other accessory that he has is a large hockey puck that um, threads into the. So you got a large striking area. So sometimes you're not paying attention. Uh, you're looking at the dent. So you're not paying attention to your strike point. And if you have a small strike point, um, there's times that I've missed, hit the uh, especially car. if I've hit the panel. Yeah. Yeah. I've done that. <laughs> um, and if, especially if you're at an odd angle, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, um, so that big hockey puck is really nice and you can use it in a couple other different areas. I think, uh, you could use it, um, as kind of a backer. If you're trying to shrink metal, sometimes I'll, I'll put that behind the, the dent when I'm, well, kind of like a dolly, my, kind of like a dolly. Yeah, basically, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it works really good for that. Vince is good uh, at that. Yeah. Yes. I say you're good at that, yeah. putting that putting that dolly behind the the panel and shrinking the metal. You yeah, taught, you taught me that. Even though it's a body chop thing, you have to actually see something like that being done and say it say it saved my butt. I I know what you're talking. I have the same hammer. I haven't had a chance to use it as probably as often as you're using it, uh, Daniel. But it is very interesting. It's very I like I like it. But what I did notice is that it comes with the brass uh, ends, like the tips, and you can actually use maybe another polished hammer and actually whack against that polished or that brass tip and not not mark your polished hammer, or whatever you're hitting with. That's pretty interesting. Is that what that's used for? Yeah. So I haven't I haven't even used that brass piece yet. That's that's mainly what it's for. You won't mark up your good hammer. 
Now, what's unique about his the slapper part is it's got a really nice large uh, hand tightened nut, and so you can change that angle of that uh, slapper and put it exactly where you want it. So if if you have your you can have it perpendicular to your hammer handle, if that makes sense, mm-hmm. and it's really really nice um you can actually take it off and you can put it on to any uh knockdown and you use it just like 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 a knockdown if you want and that's really you have a lot more precision when you do it that way have you tried that i haven't no i haven't i like i said i haven't got a chance to use it to use it as much as often as i want it so not on big crowns yet i haven't actually i haven't worked on a big dent yet but we will pretty soon starting next week but uh um, yeah, I haven't had a chance to, to use it as often as you have. Now, what you want to do is you kind of want to tilt it and rock it up on its edge when you're using it. Um, that's going to move the most metal. If you try to, uh, kind of keep it level, centered. flat, mm-hmm. centered, you're, you're not going to get the, you're not going to move as much metal as you need to. Oh, cool. That's a good tip. Yeah. And, um, the, ha- the hammer is really well balanced. It's got a nice length on it. Um, yeah, I can't say enough about it. Um, but buy it just for the accessories. I mean, it's really, really nice. Yeah, I, I do. It's well, it's really well made. It's a long. It's kind of and, like a, a longer hammer too. You know. Now it sells on his website. Sells for two hundred euros. Um, I think that's around two twenty six. I, I thought the euros are actually lower than the dollar now. How's that work now? No, I thought that's. I thought we're we got a stronger dollar now, or are we, are we clo- aren't we close? <laughs> I don't. I don't yeah, know. No, I haven't have looked sh- in a while. I'm. That's why I've been told we have a stronger dollar. So, but um, yeah. So it's two hundred euros, whatever that converts to to U.S. Stronger um, currency. Sorry, not stronger dollar. Um, yeah. Cool and. Vinny, what you got? You been working on anything? What you did you get anything to? to try Have you out? bought you buy any? Anything? Tools? Have you bought anything new? Well, you know what? Uh, you're right. The U.S. dollar is today one dollar and thirteen cents will buy you one euro. So I guess we're ahead on a euro right now. A whole thirteen cents. Yes, a dollar thirteen will get you one euro. So we're behind thirteen cents. Or is it one? I'm sorry, one euro equals a dollar thirteen. So we're we're, at, we're, we're thirteen up. cents more. Okay, cool, cool. Because I'm going to Europe so, pretty soon. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's right. You're heading off to Italy, right? Italy, going to Greece, and then take the Mediterranean cruise. Nice. Yeah. Well, I don't think your uh, your wifey is going to allow you to do too much tool shopping or PDR talking when uh, when you're cruising around on your European vacation. That's why she put me on a boat. <laughs> yes, <laughs> there is Wi-Fi on the boat, though. Still, yeah. If there's any PDR guys in Italy, come meet uh, Mike at the boat. Yeah, yeah. Or I got some guys we, in Italy and Greece. Greece, I, I got some. I trained a few guys in Greece. So, hey, hey do you hey, remember hey. that? Uh, <laughs> hey, well, yo, what's the matter, you? I'm yeah. I'm Greek. No. All right, I'm Italian. So I'm gonna have. So, I'm gonna eat so good. You guys, between those two places, I'm just going to eat and eat and eat. So so that means we're going to be getting a lot of pictures of food. Huh? That's right. That's right. Yeah. And <laughs> that's right. So, All right, Vinny. Uh, so did yeah. you buy something what or I what? Bought? I did. I did. I, you know, I was in the market for a new slide hammer, and uh, I went with the Dent Dynamics, not to be confused with Dent Dynamics in Santa Rosa, California, but Anthony Spencer Dent, Dent Dynamics out of – the Carolinas, I think it's North Carolina. Uh, he's been selling that slide hammer for years. What's his and website? Picked, DentDynamics.com? It, it is dot com. I yep. believe someone else is dot net. Yeah. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> yeah. You know, I want I, I wanted not to like that guy. <laughs> <laughs> he not in one, but he's so nice. He's a good guy. But, but he's so nice, too. I, I actually like him, man. We, we actually had dinner at MTE this year with all of us. That's and, right. Uh, he was a great guy. Actually, uh, gave me some great advice and uh, about uh, using a fulfillment center if you're going to be selling products and stuff. 
and uh, he was just great. He's, he's he really is. cool. We I always uh, we always try to have dinner. We always have dinner with him every year, right, Vinny? We always, always yeah. Always Anthony's one of our crew. He's yeah. he's a good dude. Always has been. He's an excellent excellent technician. Hail technician. Amazing hail technician. He's worked with the the big boys for years. He's an extent wizard. So him and I had that in common <laughs> off the bat. Now, have you have you ever used his double head knockdown? Yeah, I, uh, talk about I, that. yeah. I've had that for years, and uh, it sits in a drawer. Unfortunately, I, I couldn't get used to it. I could not get used to it. But there's people that swear by it. Oh, I like yeah. it. There's I like people it. that love that thing. I thought it was great, yeah. honestly, especially when you got to keep going, switching back and forth between a sharp ta- tip tap down and a soft tap down. You know. Yeah. I could see so how you Vince. still use it. Oh yeah. Yep. Yep. I just wish it had like a rubber uh, striker end or a plastic striker end. Um, I'm so used to that now, being quiet, you know, not making noise with my my tap down. I think and use you that need ultra. to get a, I think your you know your dent time wooden paddle is coming your way. You guys, you know that right? You will love it. You'll like it a lot. I just I just plugged my own hammer, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> no, anyways, uh, yeah, I put leather pretty much on everything, or I dip my hammers. So. That way I don't yeah. have to hear that ting, ting, ting. Now, when it comes to blending, that doesn't bother me. I'll use metal and metal. So yeah. yeah. Well, so the slide hammer I've been using for the last 15 years has been, uh, what is it called, Daniel? They're up by you, the slide hammer company. Oh, uh, Morgan Knocker. Yes, I had a Morgan Knocker. And I had Never heard Steve over it. It's old school body uh, Morgan Knocker was like, I think the original man. They're they're made down the street from me, and they're famous because they had uh, the the slide hammer part, the 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 weight. They have one that's shaped like a woman's body with boobs on it. Have you ever seen that? No, with, that's why it's oh, called yeah. a Morgan Knocker. Yeah, big knockers, and um, it they still sell it. You can still buy it. Uh, look up Morgan Knocker. And, uh, some, if you, if you have an old time body guy, he'll have one. Yeah. Always. Yeah. So I had that Morgan knocker and I had ultra make me, a, uh, the fitting for the front so I could put it on glue taps. But anyways, I'm like, you know what? I, this thing is so old and dilapidated. Mike makes Dude, fun thing, of me every time he sees it. it. Yeah, it's heavy, but it's great for, you know, pulling out big damage. Yeah. It, my everyone that's a PDR guy that comes to the shop and look, they're like, what the hell are you doing with that thing? You're so cheap. You're a cheap bastard. Go out and buy one. So, you know, being Anthony Spencer, uh, he's a buddy and stuff like that. I, I actually, I do have, I do have the Drew's tools, like lightsaber looking one, but I hardly ever use that. It, it's not too short. It's not effective. It's too short to throw on it. Uh-huh. So I, I bought Anthony Spencer's uh, about a month ago and I the right out of the bat, first thing I did was get a nice blood b- blister on my hand and <laughs> on my finger, and because it pulls the different the opposite direction. With a Morgan knocker, you hold the back and you slide the the weight, and yeah. there's a little stop there. I see your hand; it looks like it's going. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> it's all it was like, up, man. It was, it was like a cartoon, dude. It was like four times the size of it. Doom, 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 yeah. doom. Doom. Yeah, you... <laughs> yeah, it looks like. But you... no, Looks like it works I pretty think, good. It worked pretty good, and I, I I don't think I'll be doing that again. But uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I used it yesterday on this on this uh, body line dent right on the edge of a wheel well, and I used it in conjunction with another tool that I've gotten recently from uh, David Steen. Is it Steen or Streen? Streen. It's Steen. Streen. Streen. So, S T R E N. Is there an R in there? It's Streen. Yeah. My apologies, David. Uh, anyways, he had sent us, uh, I think you guys got it too, which was the hookers and the hangers. Yeah. The hookers are good. The hookers are good. I used that hooker. Oh yeah. (laughs) Best hookers I've ever had. I'll tell you what, man. Right. Yeah. And I mean, normally I would not have been able to fix this dent, you know, in less than three, four hours. And I, I glue pulled and hookered it out and I, 15 minutes later, I'm like, oh, I'm walking around. The guy's waiting in my waiting room. I'm like, what am I going to do? I, I told this guy two to three hours to have this thing complete and charge him $325, and I'm done in a half an hour. Hold on a second. Can uh, you, can you uh, visually tell me what you how you were using those? Now, give an idea. Now, explain what they look like in case nobody yes. knows what they look the, like. Well, the the hookers 
are are have been it's a design that's been around for a long time that usually comes with slide hammers when you're buying a body slide hammer uh from a body shop magazine or or body shop supplier it's basically a hook that hooks all the way around it's a flat piece of steel and it hooks all the way around and you usually grab uh whatever you're grabbing, whether it's a fender or quarter panel, edge of a door to, to pound out body damage. Uh, and it, it works just as good for PDR as well. I used it on a rear quarter panel on the 325i yesterday where it's double walled and the edge of the, the fender lip was bent in. And normally I would get in there with a hammer and tap it out or it, uh, some other type of tool that's, you know, even even a, a dent dial with a soft tip and work out the edge of the fender and roll it out where with the, with uh, the hookers, you just hook it on there and st- start slamming out, slamming it out with your slide hammer. And it was quick. It was really quick and smooth. It didn't kink the metal at all. And I had that, de- the, the edge of the lip of the wheel well up and out quickly and then I went in through the trunk and PDR'd a little, you know, finishing work, and I was done. Yeah. The dent that normally would have taken me two to three hours, I had it done in a half hour. And I have it, had it roughed out within five minutes. Yeah, I, I used it somewhat similar. I like it because it's it's definitely more customized for your slide hammer. You know, exactly. it's, it's not huge, and, and it's it's more narrow, so you can pinpoint where you want to, you know, make that contact and, and, and make good, nice, accurate pulls. Um, I know Daniel, you use them for, and I use them too, but you use them too, as far as like, if you're doing gas tanks and you bend the filler, the inside a little bit, right. And you use it to straighten it back out. I have used it many times. Um, cause sometimes that some tanks aren't really supported very well around that opening, the gas opening, and you're leveraging on it and the whole thing will dent in. Um, and those hookers will just slide in there and you just use a slide hammer straight up yeah. and you pull it straight out and it works every time. Um, save me many, many times. So don't be afraid if you start to bend. It's usually like on older tanks, like, uh, old Hondas and stuff like that. Um, cheaper bikes, yeah. but, um, I, I use them on the, uh, latest, the, the R ones always the bend, the inside, you know, the Yamaha's yeah. they bend. Right. If you got a dent like way over to the right side of the tank, they bend and I take that edgy tool and I just put it back. <laughs> it's, that's, so. that's careful. That's not, a, well, it's an edgy tool, but it's called a hooker. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, the edgy tools hooker. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and there's two versions. There's a, a shorter hook and a longer hook. Yep. So both of them are equally as effective yep. and uh, they're a great tool. I, I'm not sure what he's selling them for on his website, but it's everyone should have one. It's one of those things that it's, it's just it, an accessory that everyone should absolute have. Must. Yeah. It's an absolute yeah, must. Yeah. In you, your toolbox. When box. you first look at the tool and you're like, ah, you know, I, I could, you know, I could probably live without it. Then you start finding more and more needs for it. You know, <laughs> and you're like, man, once you have it, it it's great. Uh, and the same see. thing with the the hangers, the the hangers that he came out with, the they're, green hangers. The set Holy for those. Crap. The set for those two are they're not cheap though. They're hundred bucks. So for two. For two, for the two, for the longer one and the shorter one, as you're mentioning, yeah, yep, but well worth it. It's what, yeah, well's worth it. Now, since we're on that subject, I have the hanger, and I just recently got the knockdown from Dave. And Same here, man. I love I, I, I freaking I didn't know how comfortable it was going to be with the PDR knockdown. Uh, it's really good. Uh, it keeps your fingers out of the way, which I mean, I by habit. Did you get the extra out. large? Did you have the extra large, or you just had the small I, one? I don't know what size he sent me. To be honest what, with you, what color is it? What color? Green. There's both green, but he had, he has, he's got a new size with bigger holes. I couldn't get my fingers in the holes. I bet you I got the regular size because my fingers aren't big, so. Yeah, we know why. I got girl fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Well, see, I, I got the smaller version and, you know, I got that messed up finger, the Franken finger that I call it, that I had it chopped off and sewn back on. And uh, that's hard to get into the holes. But I got to tell you, I like that knockdown tool. It takes away the she, stress. That's what she said, right? Yeah. 
And, you know, last week, Daniel, we were talking about ergonomically correct tools and tools with less fatigue. And we didn't mention any of his tools and mainly because we were still trying them out. But that tool is less fatigue on my wrists. I could instantly feel the tension release off of my wrists. And I had, you know, you just hold it there. And sometimes you have to flip it the opposite way. But where I think that that knockdown is going to be really effective is with hail technicians. Hail technicians that are constantly, you know, knocking down several dents at a time. You know, what, what they're glue pulling. They'll glue pull ten dents and then boom, spend five ten minutes knocking down all their all their high spots and everything. And it's just a very comfortable, ergonomically correct tool that's going to save save a lot of stress on on your your wrists. Yeah, and it's got he's different also, strike plates. A- He's also saying that it, it, if you go to his website, he's got, I think he has two websites, right? Because he has one website that shows a kind of an x-ray of a hand and how much fatigue uh, just a regular knockdown can affect your, your hand. And by putting your fingers in it, it takes away that, that vibration going to your hand. I don't know if that's true or not, but... That's what well, has you can definitely website. tell when you're using it that how effective it is. And then well, I use it a lot for my students to learn how to see their, to keep their fingers out of the way and then and to keep the knockdown in the reflection so they see the dents and their tip at the same time as they're knocking down. So it's it you can't get your fingers in the way if you yeah. you know it's, and it's students no do that all the time they put their fingers in the way right well yeah then they they look away from what they're looking and they look at the strike plate where they're going to hit and then they'll go back and look that's the big problem that they have is that they'll they'll go to hit the the back of the of the tap down and uh and they miss because they took their eyes off of it but it, right. this helps and you did mention off. mike mike mm-hmm. it does come with two or three different strike plates as well yeah, I think it's a uh, two rubber ones, but one's harder than the other. I I've got I got those and the metal one. So I actually I I use them all. Uh, again, I use it. But all my hammers are pretty much padded or leathered up or something like that. So it doesn't bother me which one. But I like I think most of the guys prefer the rubber uh, strike plate. So yeah. Now Daniel, I think I would highly suggest you send that back to Dave and get the the bigger hold ones. Actually, I don't have it. I I didn't buy one at MTE, and I told him I'll wait until you get the bigger one. So I'm oh, gotcha. I've been waiting for it. So okay. I I don't have that tool yet. I can't wait to get it. But I you know I've got I got Flintstone fingers, man. I got big fat fingers. I got sausages. Yeah, for fingers. And then recently, I actually have the uh, the hanger. What the a hangers? Cool. Oh, jeez, <laughs> that's a good too, man. <laughs> it's so simple. It freaking, it's like, why didn't anybody think about that before? But it's it's good. And I think a lot of people think that they're plastic because it's green and it's not plastic. It's freaking metal, you know? It's in, yeah. And it's like a high carbon steel. It, you can't really straighten that out. That little hook part that you actually put into a manufactured hole okay. or what we, manufactured hole. Why, why don't we explain what this is? This, this is, this is a hanger hook that most of the time you guys would use a chain underneath a hood or, or a trunk or an or S hook. Yes, yeah, an S hook. Yeah, takes the place of an S hook. Takes the place of an S hook, and it's basically a kind of like a rectangle square with a, a, like a nice diameter hole cut through it, so you can fit your tool, your main tool, in there. And it's got a smaller tool, a hole that you can fit maybe a wire underneath it, or you can add another hanger to it to to for more leverage, different leverage. And at the end, it's got a little hook that you can hook into almost every hole you can think of, of 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 the holes that are in the panel. And that's, that's the beauty of it. It will fit in that little quarter inch hole, uh, that the Christmas trees are underneath the hood. Yeah. I have, and it fits in there, but it doesn't, you know, an S hook. Have you ever had an S hook where, where you're leveraging and the S hook would kind of lift them, the, the bend metal. It. Yeah. Bend it up. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 And this won't do that. It's got a a nice little hook on it, and it's got a sharp tip, so it kind of grabs. Bites into the metal. It's simple. That's a good point. Daniel, you mentioned the the quarter-inch hole. I used to buy those the the quarter-inch S hooks, and I would straighten those things out all the time. Yeah, this you're bending you're not crap. bending it. You're not bending this this hanger. No. There's no way. I mean, it's reinforced where the hole is where you put your tool in, 
And Daniel, you've been posting a whole bunch of crazy uh, different uses for that for that hanger. Well, I was I, tail light I was housing. Tail light. Yeah, I was in a tail light housing. I hooked it in one hole, and then I had a small little S hook, a little short one, and I hooked it through the hole on the other end, and then I I stretched it across, you know, the two the two holes for the tail light, and I stretched it across. So it was it was anchored on both ends, and it gave me a a great platform to leverage off of, and it was perfect. Loved it. Yeah. I, I have to say they are very they're small tools in a big package to be honest with you I just did a review on the uh, edgy knockdown on YouTube and with a small tutorial at the end showing how I use it effectively and it seemed like it did I mean it, it did effectively very good so I think you guys should check that out if you guys haven't seen it yet but it's really really cool I want to talk about something else I've had for a while, but I had it in my drawer for so long, I forgot about it. The other day I posted a, a picture of it and people were acting like that was the, the new thing, but it wasn't. It's been around for a long time. I think, Daniel, you've had to have already have one. Vince, I know you've seen it before. It's that fulcrum that goes right on the end of one of your tools to, to, to create leverage. It's so simple. PDR Finance oh, yeah. has it. I think, I know Dent Gear has one. Den Gear has one. I don't think Ultra has one. Um, I don't think any, any I, not far as to my knowledge, I haven't seen any, any other tool companies besides those two. And um, what it is, it's just a, a fulcrum that you can slide over your rod. And PDR, what PDR Finesse had is they just had basically a threaded screw. Or, you know, what is, what is that? Threaded, not a screw, but what is that? Is that a screw? Well, anyways, it just screws in and, it, um, and it's got a flat... Um, like a washer almost, a solid washer that's dipped with three different sizes and lengths basically. So you can, you know, create your own size and then screw it into the fulcrum against the tool and then push on a tire with all the leverage you want, you know, or wherever you want to set up, maybe in the front of a headlight where you, it's kind of open area and you don't have the leverage, but very, very effective, really good. And I forgot all about it. Something that you could use as a flat bar if you don't have a flat bar, you'd want to get a fulcrum. So the main thing is when you're pushing off the rod on a tire, some guys are in myself, maybe you're using a plastic tip and you're not watching where your tip is. If it's level straight up against the panel, you could slide and snail trail that panel. Well, with the fulcrum, it's always going to stay balanced with that platform because you can't slip. So, so really good. So check this out. Um, the Anaconda, comes with that big rubber heel yeah right yeah put that on the end of the fulcrum and use that on the tire yeah now you can use it you couldn't use it before because um the threads were different yeah i just i just re-threaded mine yeah I, oh i got new new threads i actually got one right here i always keep it on my desk right here so um do you really paper yeah, well i got an extra one so i just kind of keep it here so I like so it. he did change all that to five sixteenths. He did, uh, yeah. As far as I know, if he did, because mine works uh, perfect on all the sizes. So that's that's good. But other than that, I mean, that's we wanted to do a quick podcast about some of our newest and latest tools. I've got some tools coming from A One. That's basically my official. I've ordered small things from A One, but I haven't really. I've always wanted to check out their, you know, their Quicksilver line of their their handles i got the top of the line ones i don't want you know i got the ones that don't rust the stainless steel mm -hmm. wire set um so now i have dent craft i have i have uh blems and i have um obviously now a1 tools i do have their pistol grip ones which i i think they're phenomenal but i had to cut the tops off because it would get in the way of where you're pushing you know on the top mm. panel yeah but I'm going to so, let you guys know how, how, how I like them, you know, sometime in our future podcast. Cool. And I just got this week my hot box. And I'm going to be uh, playing with that. I'm going to have to play with that a while, though, before I do a review think, on it. I think you need to go watch that Dent Trainer video I have on there. You have to understand. Here's the thing. I've, I've worked with it for a long, long time. It works if you completely understand what it, what you, you know you're getting. If you if you have high expectations, 
you're probably going to be let down a little bit, but you really have to understand what it can do and how to use it. Me and Vince right. did a tutorial. Matter of fact, you're on there, Vince. You saw that. I mean, I came down to your shop and we did, we did a hot box tutorial. That That's was, right. I remember that. I remember how you were, you were yeah, using it and we used it on, it was a concave. Concave. Path, and it went yeah, reverse, concave. right? It went in more. Remember? It did. Yeah. It sucked it in more. And then for us to get it to come, really come out we'd have to start way outside and tighten up the metal as you walk in i think that's the biggest problem what guys were doing is that they were trying to put it straight on there and it either go reverse get bigger the dent would get bigger yeah but you'd have to that's start what happened to me farther. already yeah now mike do you still have yours or no i can't say <laughs> uh yeah <clears throat> no I, I sold it yeah moving on no <laughs> comment okay yeah, I sold it. um <laughs> Honestly, yeah, I, I think here's the deal. I know, I know Bryce, not Bryce Kelly, Bryce Rockhill. He's, he swears about it. He loves it. He likes it. And There's quite a few people, especially I, I hear a lot of the Euros, the European dudes talking about them, using yeah. them a lot. I'll say I take Cola Fria now. I'll freaking shrink out most of those dents on a rail, half the size, seriously, and then tab it, you know? Yeah. Especially with the new tabs that are coming out, I mean, there's really no excuse that you can't pull the center out. You know, you almost—it's almost too strong. Some of these tabs now for that. But anyhow, that's that's a different story. But yeah, uh, the hot box, like I said, it—if you know how to use it completely and you understand, it's you know, it's probably a good investment for yourself. But if you if you think otherwise, that you're gonna save a lot of time and you don't do any research on it and you don't play with it enough uh it's just like learning something else you really like glue pulling in the early days you really have to understand how to use it and you're gonna have to tap down a lot that means open up that center to get it shallow enough for that hot box to really pull pull the dents up because that's what me and vince had to do if it has any kind of sharpness you're going to be there a while now so. here's my take on it a lot of people aren't going to invest that type of money in the hot box because really you buy a hot box and you're going to spend a lot of money on it which they did come down on price and it's a little bit more affordable, but however, where are you going to, where are you going to use this uh, to learn how to do it? You're going to practice. You, it, it reacts differently on different types of cars, different types of panel, different types of paint. So you're not going to be messing around with this, you know, $2,000 machine on a customer's car and run the risk of burning paint. And I think that's where the biggest learning curve is in my opinion is, you know, when we try out a new tool, if we screw up a dent, We'll we'll just do it our normal way. We'll fix it instead of using cola fria. We'll go back to grabbing a rod and fix the dent and send the car on its way to the customer. But it's not like we have a plethora of cars in in our sharp shop and and our, at our disposal to to go and mess up and potentially you know burn paint. You can't do that type of stuff on on a customer's car. Yeah. Okay. Well, at least, you know since we're on it, let's just give a full. I, I can give a full review on it. Okay. Right now, I can tell you what you're going to expect when you get it. You've got to watch out for the color, the, the tricoats, especially the whites, the gold and the silver. It will discolor that paint before it even pulls the dent on certain cases. If it's, uh, it's somewhat dark, uh, deep. And you're uh, setting this thing at like 60, 60%, right? Is that what I'm putting it on? Honestly, the two see. seconds, right? Yeah, two, two seconds. Or three seconds. Whatever, and you got to watch the temperature of that panel too, because if it starts smoking, you better start stopping because, and you smell <laughs> something. Um, but the thing is, is it's dangerous because if you're not careful, you're going to discolor the vehicle, and you can't color sand that out. I tried, I freaking ruined my wife's car doing it. She's got a gold, a gold Odyssey, and I freaking discolored the car. I'm gonna talk a little lower. <laughs> <laughs> I discolored the the quarter panel and she she doesn't listen to the show. No. So you're okay. <laughs> and me and me and Vince almost discolored that pearl white Lexus, but we got it out. I mean, but yeah. that's that it's it's you've got to have a lot of time to play with to understand what it's going to do, okay? These the you I put it in technically I'm pretty brave. I put it in infinity, but I don't let it go. I hold it like did it did it Oh, that's it. I know. I kind of let off, and I have a cold rag next to it as I'm as I'm pulling it, so I can cool it off and make sure I'm not going to blow the paint. So, 
Well, and I think that's where where health health technicians are that are working in a body shop are are going to benefit from messing around with it the most because if they burn paint or you know they could just be like, hey, kick it to to body shop you know kick it to conventional, go ahead, yeah you know where a, a, on a retail aspect if I have a car coming in I'm I'm not going to go grabbing the hot box thinking oh I'm going to test out this hot box and see what I can do with it because. I don't want to burn the customer's paint no. and have to pay pay for a paint job. You, you better, Even though I have an in-house painter, yeah. I don't want, you know. You better have at money. least six months on your belt really understanding how to do that before you put it on a customer's car. That's I mean, are you are you ask yourself, are you that confident you're gonna put it on a Ferrari? You know? Um, it's probably aluminum, so sorry. We're gonna put it on a, you know, someone's pearl white Lexus. So yeah. um because that's a big expensive paint job. Does it work? It does. It does. I'm not going to say it doesn't work. Does it work? Yes. But like Vince says, it depends on the specific type of vehicle, type of dent. Now I've had it shrink up tight metal. I mean, a you know oil can dent, shrink it up tighter. It does. But again, you're gonna have to start out way outside and work around in it, and then there you go. You know. But it's definitely a learning curve on on the hot box, a big one. Okay, I'm going to Dent Trainer to watch your tutorial. <laughs> yeah, there's some good techniques on that. So, and yeah. it, sh- it, I, it shows exactly what I was talking about. So, um, but I think it's great for guy hail techs if they're pushing the paint and they got to lift a lot of it up. That'll save them some time, you know. That'll save them some time. All right, so let's move on to tech tips. Mm. Well, before we do that, I have a review that came in here that I'd like to share with, with all Absolutely. of you. Absolutely. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. We, Go ahead. We, we met this gentleman at MT. This was the first year I met him. He was from Pennsylvania. His name is John Dans. And uh, he sent us a message saying, Yo, Vince, just had to say that I binged on tool time while working on my house this weekend. Hadn't listened before. What a great job you, what a great job you guys do. And when you ask Daniel if he took his paint gauge to the bench, bench grinder. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm still laughing at it. Just wanted to say what's up and keep up the great work. Hope you're awesome out there in sunny California. Take care. John Dans, loving our show, listening, binge listening to our shows. Ah, cool. That's Very cool. nice. That's pretty cool. Hey, I want, to, I want to do a shout out to any of our listeners. If there's anybody coming to wine country, um, I'm an hour north of San Francisco. Uh, feel free to stop by my shop and say hi. Who wants to do that, dude? Well, I'm just, you know, <laughs> just No, you know what? You dude, you got such a bitchin' shop, dude. I'm so jealous, dude. Seriously. Uh I like it. I, you're gonna have you're gonna have it soon. Oh, well, I know I will. I'm gonna make it better than yours too. So Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what's the tool te- what's the tech tips, man? Tech tip, Daniel. Okay, my off. tech tip. Um this is really simple, and, and a lot of guys probably overuse this, but I'm going to just assume there's some guys that may not. So um, to clean a panel, I use PNS's paint gloss. I buy this stuff by the gallons, and I use it on every car. And when I work on a car, I clean, especially if it's dirty, I clean the whole door. If I'm working on the door, I don't clean just a spot. I clean the whole door. One reason is, and if you just clean like the spot and you're tapping on it, you'll get dirt from the upper part of the panel sliding down over the dent, over your tap down, and you're tapping dirt into your tap down, and you'll get specks if you're if you're using a a soft tip or a regular uh, tip. Uh, the the peak tips won't do that, but your other tips will. And then you have to sand them clean again. Um, but using paint gloss, so it's like putting the garnish on a plate, if you will. So if you go to an expensive restaurant, so when you deliver that that car back to that customer, it looks like a brand new door compared to the rest of the car. The rest of the car is all dirty. Here's this nice clean door. And I polish every dent out. And I actually put wax back on the area that I've just polished um, I don't think a lot of guys do that, but I always keep some wax just so if they did have their car waxed, I'm not removing it in that one spot, 
that's not what I would want in my car. So I'm not going to do it to somebody else. So I always put wax back on it. And um, that's my little tech tip. Cool. Paint gloss, CNS. Nice. Good, good. Vinny, you want to go? Uh, I, you know, you don't have one? Yeah, I guess so. Well, my tech tip is more of a, from a retail standpoint. Whenever, and I've run into this a couple of times. Mike, I know you've ran into this as well. And that's when you go to work on a customer's car, whether it's at your shop or mobile, have them sign a work order ahead of time. Write down your Absolutely. description of what you're going to do, what panel you're going to work, and uh, if you're glue pulling, have that little release in there saying, hey, if we pull glue, we're not responsible for it and everything, and have them sign a work order before you start on the car. Why? I've run into this a couple times now recently where I've been made the fool because I did not have them sign it. I was in a hurry, and... By law in California, before you work on a, a, a customer's car, you are supposed to have a work order. You're supposed to have them sign it. A lot of us got lazy, and you know, even my technicians, I've trained them. You have to get this signed ahead of time. But I, I fall victim to it as well, and it's bit me in the ass a couple times recently. And uh, it, it's, it's when you spend three hours improving a dent, that, uh, you know, for me to sit on a dent for three hours and not get paid on it because the customer claims, well, that's not what you told me it was going to look like. After I told him ahead of time, this is not something that's paintless dent removal. It needs to go to a body shop and I could get it 80, 90 percent and they're OK with that. Well, if they're OK with that, make sure you get it in writing and make sure you you they sign that before you even start on the car. And that now, way do you have that percentages uh, like do you have a box for that percentage? on your work order? I do. I have a little statement that says 90% uh, or better when stated by the technician. I underline it and I have them initial that and sign it at the bottom. And See, most of the times I don't, I don't do that because most of the time I'm shooting for a hundred percent and I get it to a hundred percent. But the times that you're dealing with the body damage stuff that they just want you to make it look better, you know, you, you got to make sure that stuff's signed. I have a little box next to each each price point that I have and I, and it has percentage on the top part of the box and I mark what percentage I'm promising for each panel, uh, individually. Can you send that and, over to PDF me on that? Yeah. Send yeah. that to me too. Cause I got new invoices coming. I'm yeah. going to need new invoices. And then I, I actually had the customer sign when they're paying that there's, they've looked at the dent and they're satisfied with it. Um, I don't know if you've ever had a customer come back the next day or uh, another family member and, you know, not be happy or whatever. And you, you can say, hey, this was signed here. They accepted it. You shouldn't have accepted it. Um, I've, so. Daniel, Daniel I've had a butt. customer come. I had a customer come back a year later, said that the dent came back. <laughs> She told me yeah. this on the phone before she even came in, oh, so I, I, I already knew. I was like, oh, this is going to be fun. So when she came in, and I, I pulled her invoice, I had her signature and everything, and the panel was marked. I said, I went out and looked at it. I'm like, yeah, you definitely have a dent there, but here's your invoice from last year, and we actually worked on the other side of your car. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, just cover your ass. Cover your ass. Yeah. There's a lot of... It's just the day and now, time. There, there, there are some people out there that they will try to rip you off. Yeah. They're just a, there is some people out there that that's what they're. Or they are use the Yelp thing against you. Hey, I found oh, you yeah. on Yelp and uh, I hope you do a good job because uh, I'm a Yelp person and, uh, you know. Yelp, I, Yelp, Yelp. I could do this this way to you. <laughs> you know, yeah, we all hear about that. But, okay, my tech tip is. Uh, Mine's more, mine's more like when you get super busy and, um, I have an Apple phone. I have a droid phone. Unfortunately, I get calls and text messages from either one, but I have shortcuts on my short phrase re cuts on my replies to my phone. I can't answer 15, 25 texts a day saying practically the same thing with a different price. It just, it, it would drive me nuts. So I have, I put on short phrases on my phone 
So when someone calls, sends me a text message or, I mean, text messages, I can actually reply back within two letters and write about, you know, three paragraphs. Now, Vince thinks it's, oh man, it's overkill. It's to me, I tell, I answer all their questions right off the bat with a video link to show them, you know, where they can, if they want to take a look at how it's done, then there, there we go. It saves me a ton of time. Now, Apple's got one built in on there and their back end that you can do shortcut court a shortcut phrases. The Droid, the new Droid, they don't for some reason they don't have it. So I use a um, an app called Textpan, T E X P A N D. It's great. I can put as much wordage as I can in there. And again, I just type in some little short, brief little shortcut that I want it to be, and it'll put in a bunch of stuff. Now, if you guys want to hear an example. Vince, go ahead. Say your thing. Uh, no, no, no. That's great. But I was just gonna. I was gonna say I started using Glimpse. You you mentioned Glimpse a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my customers love it. They absolutely love they do. it. I'm telling you. You know, they they had no idea what it was, but they clicked on it and saw me driving 80 miles an hour to their house. Yep. And they knew exactly where I was, and they stopped. You know, they would see me stop to go to the McDonald's or to fuel up on gas before stop and get into their shop stop at the dispensary that yeah the dispensary <laughs> and uh yeah it's hilarious because it's a it 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 gives that bond with the customer like it, it's a friendly communication right off the bat before they even meet you and i've had customers waiting outside waiting for me hey there you are you know waving <laughs> yeah. me down yeah <laughs> no, it, saw me it's it's good customer service too i mean now it, i want i want the I want the same thing, but in reverse. I want to know when my customers are showing up at my shop. Is there not? Is there an app out there that will send people uh, appointment reminders? Uh, send that out to the well, listeners. Unless Any they're Google, yes. of an app like that. We let use. Me know. Yeah, well, that's what uh, I use the Google Calendar for booking appointments. You get their email address, and it sends them a. You could set it up to send send them a reminder ten minutes, half hour, hour ahead of time. Yeah. Reminder. Yeah. I want to do it on texting though. Text you can. Uh, I believe. Oh no, maybe not. Okay. I don't know I'll, either. I'll look into that. Okay. All right, man. So okay. well, well, hold show. on a second. I want to. Uh, I want to. No. What do you, what do you oh, got? What do we you want got? to hear his uh, his phrases that he has already pre-programmed into his phone. Uh -oh. Yeah. Well, so I, gotcha. I wanted to uh, just mention that here. Let me see here. And uh, so anyways, I hit this thing. I just type in 1D, and I've got a complete text message. And um, I'm sure I should go to my other one here. Yeah, don't don't confuse it with the one you send to your wife all the time. <laughs> yeah, yes, Sorry, dear. I'm busy right now, you know. Um, so anyways, I hit 1D. And I get a check mark up there. It tells me, okay, you're allowed to do it. Here's here's where I break it down, and this is kind of like this is a long tech tip, but it's a, a helpful one to you guys. And I actually put this on Dent Trainer as well. Uh, this is the type of stuff that you guys get to see and hear and watch on Dent Trainer. Anyways, so I hit my quick reply. My quick reply is so if they sent me a dent, like a hand sized dent, uh, I reply quickly. Thank you for your interest. This will be a general estimate based on the photos you provided. Some removal and installation, R and I, dash, headlights, panels, liners, tailgates, etc. Because some people don't know what R and I is. Charges may apply, which will be determined upon final inspection. Now the reason why I say general estimate because I'm actually looking at it through a text message. So I don't know if for sure if that's uh, going to be my estimate is going to be in concrete. So I'm letting them know that it's not going to be in concrete. And then my next paragraph is we can remove your dent for, and it has a dollar sign so I can put it in whatever size uh, money I want. So let's, for instance, let's say 450. Our service is mobile and it's performed at your home or office within whatever timeline. So I would say, you know, two to three hours. And our, my, th my third paragraph, we offer a satisfaction guarantee or no charge applied. Please visit our Yelp reviews. And I have a link to each one of these things. Instagram, Dent Time, YouTube, blah, blah, blah. Okay. And the last but, and most important thing of my, my reply, and with, with asterisks next to it, if there was something in the photos, our photo, 
that I did not mention or notice, please bring it to my attention. I'll resend a more accurate quote. Thank you. With my name and my website. Boom. All that information is right there. And a quick reply. And I don't have to sit there and deal with all the questions. So that's that's my tech tip. That's good. Good, 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 good. Yeah. Solid. I like it. Yep. Okie dokie. So, uh, I think that's it for uh, this week on PDR Tool Time. Yeah. Right? Uh, that's it. That's it. So, what do hey, you got to say, Daniel? Level up your tools and join the revolution. We are out of here, man. Hey, don't forget. Don't forget to go to dentrainer.com. Check us out. Got a lot of cool stuff. Don't forget to subscribe to PDR Tool Time, guys, on iTunes. All that good stuff. Give us some feedback. Get a free t-shirt. Give us some suggestions. Oh, don't forget, we've got the t-shirts on sale at pdrtooltime.com, pdrtooltime.com slash store. I'm Mike Toledo, along with Vince D'Alessandro and Daniel Grom. Take care, guys. <laughs>